Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today we are going to present on topic telecommunications, the internet and wireless technology. I am Nur Fatihah binti Saleh. Okay, in this topic we are going to explain on 4.1 what is the components of telecommunications networks and key networking technologies. 4.2 is types of networks 4.3 on how the internet works and supports e-business and lastly the wireless revolution networking and communication trends okay nowadays telephone networks and computer networks are converging into single digital network using shared internet technology and equipment which means that telephone networks and computer networks are evolving or joining together into one. For example, Rogers and Bell are communications company that offer data transmission, internet access, cellular service, and television, television programming as well as voice service. And also, companies such as Rogers and Shaw offer voice service and internet access and in Malaysia we can see Unify company which they converge telecommunications broadband and 4G service provider which means um, Unify uh, when you use Unify you can watch television and you also can access data and internet through Unify other example is other example are DG, Cellcom, Maxis and the other tele telecommunications provider that also provide internet data, internet data access to their consumer. Next, broadband, broadband wireless is a high speed internet and data service delivered through a wireless local area network or wide area network. Okay, broadband wireless can be fixed or mobile data, mobile broadband wireless. Fixed, fixed broadband always used within homes, offices and college. And it also can be accessed in public such as in restaurant, coffee shop, airports and hotels. For example, Wi-Fi uh, such as Streamix or Unify. And mobile broadband is the one that connect through our phone. For example, uh, Cellcom, Nexus, you mobile, uh, you can access internet from your phone. Next, this is um, simple network component. First is client computer, server computer, network interfaces, connection medium. Network operating system, hub or switch, routers, and software defined networks. Okay, client computer is the PC, our computer or laptop. Server computer is uh, when the data from the client computer is transmitted to server computer. Okay, network interfaces typically built into client computer. And connection medium is cable or wireless signals for transmitting data in the network. Network operating system is software that manage communications on networks and coordinates network resources and it resides on every computer or on dedicated server computer, hub or switch. Hubs is a device that connect network components sending packets of data to all connected device and switch is like hubs but it can forward data to specific destinations router is a network device to connect two or more networks and software defined networks is an approach to cloud compu computing that facilitates network management and, um, and enables programmatically efficient network configuration in order to improve network performance and monitoring. For example, 
um, iCloud, Google Drive, and and more. Okay, this is uh, components of simple network that I have explained before. This is the PC which is client networks and the data will go through the switch and to server and it will distribute it to other networks internet. Next, the network in large, com in large company companies is more complicated and bigger. Where there are hundreds of local area networks linked to firm-wide corporate networks. And they use various powerful servers such as website, corporate intranet, extranet and bank system. For example, um, in a companies, there will be um, several department and this department, this computer in every department will connect together and it will become a complex, more complex networks. Next. Okay, in today's corporate network infrastructure, it's a collection of many different networks from the public switch telephone networks to the internet to corporate local area networks, linking work groups, departments or office floor. Next. Okay, this is the more complex one rather than the simple one that used in the large company where there are more PC or client computer that will be transmitted first to server through and it will be connected through internet service provider and wireless and this is wireless internet service provider this is the mobile wi-fi network where the pc or laptops will be connected to Next, we'll be on key digital networking and technologies. That's all from me. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, my name is Nur Amali Hayati Binti Abdullah. Okay, for today, I will talk about key digital networking technologies. So, contemporary digital networks and the internet are based on three key technology, which are client-server computing, packet switching and TCP IP. Okay, next. So basically, machines or devices such as desktop, laptop or handphones that we use to connect with the internet and when we type or search any website or web page, your computer will send your request to a server on the network and the server will look at your request and respond to it and send the web page you are looking for to your computer. Basically, you are making the request, so you are the client that needs some information. And this computer which fulfills your request is called the server. Client-server technology is all about distributed computing. A specific process needs to be computed and takes too long on a single processor. So the load of this process gets divided over multiple processes. A process gets split into multiple tasks and each task runs on its own until they all join together again to present the final result. So uh, next we will proceed to the packet switching. The packet switching is a method of slicing the digital messages into parcels called packets. Sending the packets along different communication paths as they become available and then reassembling the packet once they arrive at their destinations. So, what is the difference with, between circuit switching and the packet switching? In a circuit switch network, when two nodes need to communicate, the, a direct and continuous connection is established between them. So, it carries only the conversa conversation for as long as it lasts. For example, in the old analog phone system, a strand of copper connected a telephone to a phone line to a phone line to a switching facility. A physical link will then be made to align to another switching station and from there it will go through a strand of copper all the way to the other phone. Meanwhile, on a packet switching, 
network data is divided into chunks or packets the, the or packets sorry so the packets have headers attached to them to identify them for example uh, by source destination and sequence number and are intermingled with with the packets of other conversations on a shared network so for the packet switching i also uh, prepare a video for you to be more understanding about the packet switch all ethernet and internet traffic is sent using packets here's how it works the big file you're sending is broken up into small pieces called packets now these packets have additional information where they come from where they're going and where they are in relation to the original file you're sending they're sequentially sent over the network Because they have destination information, they know where they're supposed to end up. However, because the Ethernet system may send those various packets by different paths, they'll likely end up at the destination computer out of order. The good news is that each of those packets had information about what order they're supposed to be reassembled in. So your computer puts them all back in the right sequence, and you have your reassembled file, ready for viewing, reading, listening, or watching. Okay, now we will proceed to the third key of digital technology. So the third one is the TCP and IP. So what is exactly the meaning of TCP and what is an IP? So the TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol and for the IP it stands for Internet Protocol. The TCP handles the movement of data between the computers and establishes a connection between the computers, sequences the transfer of packets and, on, and acknowledges the packet sent. As for the IP, it's responsible for the delivery packets and includes the disassembling and reassembling of packets during the transmission. So generally, TCP and IP is a typical telecommunications network consists of diverse hardware and software components that needs to work together to transmit the information. So different components in a network can communicate with each other only by adhering to a common set of rules called protocols. So the meaning of protocols can be, um, can be uh, de defined as a set of rules or procedures governing the transmission of information between two points in a network. The TCP and IP provides a universally an agreed on method for breaking up digital messages into packets and then routing them to the proper address and then reassembling them into coherent messages. Next. So for your information, uh, the TCP and IP is developed in early 1970s to support US Department of DARPA, which means uh, DARPA stands for Defense Advanced Research Project Agency uh, efforts to help scientists transmit data among different types of computers over long distances. So basically, there are four layers of TCP IP models for communication, which are the first layer are application layers, second one is transport layers, the third one is internet layers, and the last one network interface layer. So uh, let, me, uh, let me explain about the first layer, which is application layer. The application layer, it enables the client application programs to access the other layers and defines the protocols that that application used to exchange data. One of these application protocols is the hypertext transfer protocol or known as HTTP, which is used to transfer web page flies. And then for the next layer, which is transport layer, it is responsible for providing the application layer with communications and packet services. And for the third layer, which is internet layer, it is responsible for addressing, routing and packaging data packets called IP datagrams. And the IP, which is uh, called internet protocol, is one of the protocol used in this layer. And for the last layer, which is network interface layer, it is responsible for placing packets on, a receive, on and receiving them from the network medium, which could be any networking technology. So the two computers which using TCP IP are able to communicate even if they are based on different hardware and software platforms. The data sent from one to other computer passes through all four layers, starting with application layer 
and passing through the network interface layer, then reassemble into a format the receiving computer can use. So if the receiving computer finds a damaged packet, it asks the sending computers to retransmit it. This process is reversed when the receiving computer responds. Next. Next, I will explain uh, about the types of networks. First, uh, the analogs against the, against the digital. So, the analog signals were used in many systems to produce signals to carry information. These signals are continuous in both values and time. The use of analog signals has been declined with the arrival of digital signals. With the arrivals of digital signals. In short, to understand the analog signals is that all signals that are natural or comes naturally are analog signals. For example, human voice in air, uh, natural sound and analog electronic devices. Next. As for the digital signals, unlike analog signals, digital signals are continuous, but sig sorry, the digital signals are not continuous, but signals are discrete in value and time. These signals are represented by binary numbers of con and consist of different voltage values. For example, uh, the computers, optical drive and other electronic devices. So the difference between analog and digital technologies is that in analog technology, information is tra translated into electric pulses of varying amplitude. In so and then in the digital technology, translation of information is into binary format, which is zero or one, where each byte is representative of two distinct amplitudes. So uh, to make you more, be more understanding about the analogs against digital signals, I will show you one video related to it. As you can see here, uh, it's a modem. So what, the, what does it mean by modem? The term modem is a shorthand for modulator and demodulator. 
uh, it takes the first words which is more and them so it calls as modem so it is a device that translate digital signals into analog form and vice versa so that computers can transmit data over analog networks such as telephone and cable network modems work used to modulate the signals on telephone lines so that digital information could be encoded and transmitted over then and then demodulated and decoded on the other end. The more modern broadband connections like cables and satellites don't really work the same way. We kept using the words the, or the term modern because it is a device people were already familiar with and associated with connecting to the internet. Okay, uh, so next we are going to talk about type of networks. When we talk about networks, there are various types of networks such as uh, PAN, LAN, CAN, and etc. As for today, we will focus on LAN, WAN, MAN, and CAN. So LAN uh, stands for Local Area Networks. From the term local, we can probably guess that LAN network designs don't span, uh, don't span a large region. The basic LAN network is just a simple network of computers, although LANs can often span multiple buildings. In the, in the example below, you can see a network divided by a router which is being used to connect the network to the internet. So there are three things to remember about a LAN. First, they will operate within a, they operate within a limited geographical area. Second, they allow a large amount of users to access media with high bandwidth capability. And the last one, they prove full-time connectivity with local services. So next, the next one is uh, WANs, which means Wide Area Networks. So WANs are the networks that interconnect with uh, LANs. And for example, the company who has offices in three in three separate states if the company wishes to have each office on the same network they will need to somehow connect the lans together whereas wan enables you to send an instant messages to someone around the world uh, a lan will be limited to a much smaller group geographical location so the internet is biggest wan on earth Looking from a global perspective, we can see that WAN as a collective of networks run by many people, whereas LAN is often run by a specific organization. This one is MANs, which means Metropolitan Area Networks. As the name implies, it covers a metropolitan area such as city or the suburbs of a city. They span a much larger geographical area than LANs but do not often surpass the limits of a metropolitan area. MANs are generally good for business and organizations that have multiple locations around a city. Now I will introduce the CEN, which is the campus area network. When I said campus, you have probably think about well, university or campus. Well, it is uh, one type of network design spans a university or campus. It acts a lot like MAN would in some cases, although it obviously has a much more specific purpose. So uh, the next one uh, is what is the internet? So basically the internet is a telecommunications network that uses telephone lines, cables, satellites and wireless connection to connect computers and other devices to the World Wide Web. All modern computers can connect to the internet as can many mobile phones and some televisions, video game consoles and other devices. Internet addressing and architecture. So every computer on the internet is assigned a unique internet protocol address which currently is, is a 30 byte number represented by four strings of numbers and ranging from 0 to 255. So what does it mean by IP address is that it is a network address for your computer so the internet knows where to send you emails, data and pictures and etc. So the computers and other devices communicate using IP address to identify each other on the internet. However, people don't remember IP address since the IP address uh, is numerical form. 
so that they will use words uh, to search or to search any web page or website on the internet. So the domain name system brings the two together and gets you to your destination. The example of IP address, as, as you can see here, is in numbers which are 12.34.56.78. This is just only an example for the IP address. And then the examples of the domain name system is like www.google.com. So in other words, DNS translates the IP address into human-friendly phrases so that we can easily search and browse the internet. So uh, to make you understand more about DNS, which is the domain name system, I will show you one video about uh, what is the... Have you ever wondered how the internet really works? Many people do, from simple web surfing to sharing pictures on social media. In fact, the internet heavily relies on something called a DNS, a database of network names and IP addresses. These three little letters hold huge weight. Without DNS, the internet as we know it would simply not exist, and we would be left dealing in ones and zeros. Without DNS, everyday activities such as shopping, web browsing, research, communications, or downloading would not be possible. That is why experts usually refer to DNS as the phone book of the internet. So, what is DNS and why is it important? In brief, DNS is a comprehensive translation system used to search the internet. You might wonder, naturally, what it translates. Well, in the simplest definition, DNS is the term used to describe a system that assigns user-friendly names to unique IP addresses. It translates unfathomable amounts of data into words and phrases in order to provide clear and accurate search results. While computers communicate using strings of numbers, humans obviously do not. DNS translates such number strings into human-friendly phrases. You see, each IP address must be distinct in the network, which allows users to reach a particular website. An IP address could be a set of any four numbers from 0 to 255, like 162.247 dot 79 dot 100. When you see a domain name into your browser, the DNS system bursts into action, translating the browser name into the IP address associated with the website. Once the website IP address is found, your computer connects with the web host and the requested page is displayed on your computer. While the concept might seem basic, DNS is a cornerstone in how the... Oh, uh... Last slide for me is that the internet architecture and the governance. So the internet governance refers to the rules, policies, standards and practices that coordinate and shape global cyberscape. So there are few organizations such as IAB that stands for Interactive Advertising Bureau, ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers and W3C uh, which means the World Wide Web uh, Consortium. This organization uh, is the one, are the one who establish internet policies. However, none of this organization has full control over the usage and functions of internet, but they still can influence government agencies, major network owners, and ISPs, which, uh, which stands for Internet Service Provider. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Muhammad Ibrahim Ben Ismail. So I will proceed to the internet network architecture. So this is actually the figure of internet network, as you can see. Uh, the backbone is actually uh, internet service provider, MAE, which is a metropolitan area exchange, which serves as a hub, uh, which uh, distribute the data package. For example, like when we are uh, uh, searching for the internet. Uh, so MAE is the one that distribute all the data from the internet service provider uh, from uh, to whichever client that we serve on. For example, like if we search on the campus network, so MAE will uh, distribute the data package to the uh, campus network. Next. So. Uh, this is actually uh, the difference between IPv6 and Internet 2. 
So IPv6 uh, is actually a new addressing scheme for IP numbers. Uh, so as, as we all know that every device that uses internet has its own IP address which serves as uh, it's more like a, a, a zip code or address. So due to the increasing number of internet user, so they, they actually uh, updated the IP, IPv6 from IPv4. So Internet 2 is, is a network consortium. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, for education purpose. So this is where all the uh, research journal. It's more like an e-library where all the journals are stored. So next. So this is the example of uh, internet services. Uh, for example, like email, I'm pretty sure all of you know email where we transfer message from one network to another network. Uh, next is chatting and instant messaging. This, uh, for example, like WhatsApp. Uh, <coughs> opening? Uh. This group is actually uh, it's more like a forum where we can uh, discuss on things online. So next is Telnet. Telnet is, is uh, where we connect from one computer to another computer within uh, the same client. So FTP is for a file transfer protocol. For example, like when we transfer file from data file from computer, to, to our pen drive or something. So World Wide Web. World Wide Web, World Wide Web is accessible over internet. So VOIP, which is voice over internet protocol, which is I will explain to you later. VPN is a virtual private network. Next. <coughs> so this is uh, the client server competing on the internet. So client which is a small, uh, a, a small, for example, like when we browse uh, through the network, we are the client and we will, serve to the, uh, we will access to the server where all the data are stored. So this is the example of server, such as application server, database server. So I'm pretty sure that uh, all uh, company have their own server where, where they store data information. For example, like uh, in our daily life, we as a student of UITM, we actually are uh, connected to UITM server when we uh, uh, open the student portal. Next. So this is voice over IP. This, uh, for example, like when we, when we talk, when we when we want to transfer a voice message, it will uh, interpret in the internet and it will go to the other, other side of the network. For example, like Skype messaging, Skype messaging and uh, WhatsApp voice. Next. So this is a virtual private network. So a virtual private network is uh, to hide the website that we visit. It's more like a, a private where the information will not be leaked or will not be traceable by the government or any hackers. So people use the VPN for security uh, where they don't want to leak the information to the hackers and this for uh, important data. Next. So this is the web. HTML, HTML is the hypertext markup language. This is actually uh, how, how the display of the web page. And for HTTP, it's more like a protocol uh, that connect from the server to the browser. So URL is the address of the web page. Example, like when you type uh, a web page, they, they have their own URL, which is more like an address to that website. And web server is <coughs> a server that store all the web information. 
Next. So searching for, for information on the website, I'm pretty sure that everyone use internet I'm, uh, and use the search engine where, where we type all the keywords and that is the search engine. Mobile search is when you search for, when you search on the mobile phone. Uh, predictive search is uh, when you type on the Google and there, uh, and it will appear like a suggestion where you can, they can predict what you want to search for. Next. So this is search engine marketing. It's a major source of internet advertising revenue and so social search. For example, like Google Plus and Facebook Lite. Next. So visual search is facial recognition software. Uh, nowadays, uh, people use uh, facial recognition, for example, like in iPhone 10, where they use facial feature to actually unlock the iPhone. And intelligent shop, agent shopping bots, for example, like uh, Shopee, Lazada, and so on. SEO is a uh, search engine optimization where Google actually for example, like Google actually uh, rank uh, the website based on what people search the most. Mm. Next. Okay, I am Siti Nadias, so I'm going to explain about how Google works. First, as a user, we'll enter the query, and second, the Google web servers receive the request, and they will use over one million. PCs that link together and connected to the internet to handle incoming requests and produce the result. Then the request is sent to the Google's index servers that describe which pages contain the keywords that we have entered. And the fourth step is the using page rank software. The system will measure the importance or popularity of each page by solving an equation with more than 500 million variables. And two billion terms. These are likely the best pages to the for, for the query and the small text summarized are prepared and the results will appear about 10 pages. Okay, next. Okay, we are going to see how search engine works with Okay, this is the comparison between web 1.0, 2.0 and 3.0. Okay, basically 1.0 is just only a web and the second, the social web and currently we are using the third uh, which is semantic web. 
uh, while the web point O can can be only be read, and the web point two they can read and write web, and the third they will read, write, and execute the web. For the inter uh, for web one point O, they can only information sharing, and for the second they will can give interaction between the consumer and others. And the third one, it will be immersion. For Web 1.0, they can connect information. The third, uh, second one can connect people, and for the third one, they can connect knowledge. And for the example, Web 2.0, like Wikipedia, where visitors can add, delete, or modify the content. And Web 3.0, like uh, Wolfram Alpha and Apple Siri. Okay, this is the examples of Web 3.0, which are Wolfram Alpha. Uh, the comparison between when we are using Google and Wolfram Alpha. Wolfram Alpha will summarize large amounts of information into knowledge and useful actions, while Google, they will result more pages will appear. While Wolfram Alpha, when you turn, when we enter some Keywords they will appear, uh, organize statistic, historical, geographical, and useful aspect of comparison analysis. And this is Apple Siri. Apple Siri use of techniques of speech recognition. While you can only speak with the phone, and they will take the actions. Okay, next. This is the uses of the web for the retail. This is the comparison, the revolution. What? Uh, from web 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0. Next. And this is the application in the restaurant. When uh, web 1.0, they can only uh, read 2.0, uh, they will can interaction with the user. And 3.0, we can uh, help the user to order and so on. Next. Okay, number uh, the point number four. We are going to see the wireless revolution. It consists of cellular system, wireless network, and internet access. The third one, read RFID, which is radio frequency identification. And number four, wireless sensor networks, stand WSNS. Next. Okay, this is the cellular system which is CDMA. CDMA stands for Code Division Multiple Access, which use system Verizon and Spring. They are developed by the military during war, World War II and which is more efficient than GSM. GSM is a global system for mobile communications, which the strength is for international roaming capabilities. And nowadays we are having 3G and 4G. 3G, the speed is only 144 kilobytes until 2 megabytes, while 4G, they can be up to 100 megabytes. And this is wireless network and internet access, which we have Bluetooth and WiMAX. Okay, Bluetooth, okay, I'll explain it later. Next. Introducing iBeacon, Apple's shining achievement in proximity services. So what is it? Let me take you through it. Picture a lighthouse. A lighthouse sends a signal of light to communicate with ships. Similar to a lighthouse, a beacon uses a Bluetooth low energy signal to communicate with any smart device in its range. Simple, right? Let's talk hardware. There are many devices that can be used to broadcast as a beacon, such as a computer, iPad, USB, and iPhone. There's plenty of options to suit your own personal needs. Once broadcasting, you get the micro-location of the device in the vicinity of a beacon, which is much more accurate than a satellite struggling to get a precise GPS location all the way from space. It's amazing how beacons are activated just by walking nearby. Let's look for example. You could be out for a stroll when your phone gets a notification from a nearby store. A 
It's enticing, so you go in to check it out. Upon entering, an employee greets you. As you make your way around the store, you notice a product you really like. The beacon recognizes you near the product and delivers a coupon straight to your phone. At checkout, your phone is scanned, redeeming your coupon. This completes your purchase. On the way out, the store offers you a discount upon returning, motivating you to come back. How cool is that? Three main things happen here. The offline physical location, the digital online attraction, and the resulting action offline, or we like to say offline, online to offline. It's about the real world, not just the digital one. So where can IB can be used? It can be used in retail, transportation, restaurants, homes, hotels, museums, stadiums, schools, and even amusement parks. Essentially, you can use iBeacon anywhere. So what are you waiting for? Go to gemtots.com and start broadcasting your own beacon today. This is the differences between Wi-Fi and WiMAX. Wi-Fi is stand for wireless fidelity, while WiMAX is a worldwide interoperability for microwave access. Uh, Wi-Fi had been launched in 1997 and WiMAX been launched in 2004. And for access range, Wi-Fi only can range within 100 meters and for the WiMAX, it can up to 80 to 90 kilometers. While transmission speeds, WiMAX is much more higher, which is 75 megabytes, while the Wi-Fi is only 54 megabytes. For the range technology, and of course, WiMAX is a longer one than the Wi-Fi. The next. Okay, this is how WiMAX works, as I have mentioned before. WiMAX is more larger and long technology, which they can up to 80 to 90 kilometers. It started from uh, the WiMAX base station. It connected to a point-to-point -point back hall and to the house, and we, that's why we have received the Wi-Fi. Okay, next. Okay, this is how RFID works. The first one, the microchip will hold the data, including the end identification number. The rest of the tag is an antenna that transmit data to the reader. And the second step is a uh, the antenna that constantly transmit will senses a tag. It wakes it wakes it up, interrogates it, and decodes the data. Then it will transmit the data to a host system over wired or wireless connections. And the host computer will process the data from the tag that have been transmitted by the reader. Next. The application will be shown in this video. In recent years, inadequate dishwashing workers have been a great challenge for the catering industry. Centralized dishwashing service has thus emerged. With the increasing efficiency of the catering service, the cost of the catering service is increasing. We have partnered with a special catering service In addition to the RFID technology, the system has also employed Internet of Things cloud computing, and other technologies. A heat-resistant and waterproof RFID tag is assigned to each dish container. When the containers pass through checkpoints, the RFID readers will gather the information and transmit to the system. From pickup to transportation, dishwashing, and storage, users can monitor the process at their fingertips. The system can also identify the dish container using radio waves. RFID This tailor-made RFID monitoring system for dishwashing has to take into account the partnering company's operating environment and detailed work process.
the choice of RFID tags, type and number of readers, locations and angles of antennas, as well as software usage, etc., have to be considered in one go. Since its operation, the system has increased centralized dishwashing productivity of the partnering company by 10 to 15 percent. With its professional knowledge and resources, PolyU has been actively transferring knowledge into practical solutions and working closely with the business and industry sectors to support their long-term development. Next. Okay, this is how WSNS works. WSNS stands for Wireless Sensor Networks, which is network of hundreds or thousands interconnected wireless devices embedded into physical environment to provide measurements of many points over large spaces. Okay. <clears throat> they are using uh, they are used to monitor building security, detect hazardous substances in air, monitor environmental changes, traffic or military activity. As you can see here, this WSNS they will be used for in the in a large in a large range. As you can see, they will be indoor position, building automation. They will use all the intranet, and it will connect it to add to gateway software and other software. Next. Okay, that is. Okay, that's all. Eh, nak explain ke? Explain lah kan? Pasir ni. This is pasir question. And uh, which recently, June 2018, it's about differences between analog and digital signal. And the second one, we distinguish between LAN, MAN and WAN. And describe any five major internet services with appropriate examples, which uh, having 10 marks. For July 2017, uh, you should explain why large public networks such as internet is more vulnerable than internet internal networks. And the second question is about wireless security challenges in wireless network for at public location. And the last one, you have to explain any five examples of computers as targets of crime. Okay, that's all. <laughs>